When you arrive at the site to do a flow calibration, you record your data. So it's all of the, the pertinent information on the e-log. Then you do a leak check. Then you take the tape off and clean the nozzle and vein um, as you typically do with a normal flow check. Um, once the tape is removed and the nozzle and vein have been cleaned, you remove the sharp cut from the system and select. Traditionally, you're going to have a um, uh, password it's going to request. It's F1, 2, 3, and 4. When you get to the screen, um, you're going to, it's going to start off at the um, temperature setting. The temperature setting um, will indicate uh, 20, uh, this is indicating 24.4. You would take your um, thermometer and place it up at the meteorological station and get a consistent temperature. It should be no more than two degrees off. Um, but whatever reading you do have on your NIST thermometer, you'll record that. Come down to the screen, and you'll use the, the red arrow keys to indicate uh, the new temperature. For the sake of this uh, demonstration, we're going to say that it was 25.2. See, we come over here, move the arrow over, move it up to 25, and then move across and down to 25.2 and then you would hit calibrate. And now that's going to set the BAM temperature at 25.2. To do the um, flow calibration, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and hit uh, test and come up here to flow. Once we're in here and it's setting it up, we're gonna take our thermometer, place it up, at the, uh, the meteorological station, record the result. The result should be um, whatever your NIST thermometer indicates. Um, wait till it gets a stable reading. It's always good to try to get it in the shade if you can, because the temperature um, can vary a lot with the sunlight. Uh, if it's in direct sunlight, it's a better idea to try to do it with you know, an umbrella or something to shade once you get a reading, come down here to the uh, screen, and for the for the sake of this argument or this presentation, let's say the temperature is 21 degrees for some reason. I'm going to come over here, use the arrow key to move over, directional area arrow down, and set it to 21 degrees C, and hit calibrate. And you'll see that this one, uh, the now the band is calibrated to 21 degrees. Um, then we're going to set the, we're going to calibrate the barometric pressure. You would take your um, barometer and place it up here. Wait till you get a stable reading on the screen here. We're going to say for the sake of this argument, it's 762. Um, so at 762, you're going to move the arrow up to, it was reading 760, and hit calibrate. And you'll see now that the BAM is now calibrated to 762 millimeters mercury. For the flow, we're using a water manometer, which Mike's holding over here. And we've gotten it filled with water. It's currently filled to, um, an equilibri equilibrium at 0.1 inches. So our base number is going to be 0.1. Um, and we're gonna do three separate um, uh, flow calibrations. It's gonna be at 15 liters, 18.4 liters, and 16.7 liters, which is essentially 16.7 is your precision point, and then you're doing a 18.4 with a high span and 15.0 with a low span. 1.7 off from where our, our initial or our original goal will be, which is 16.7. So you hit next. Now it, it, it increased up to uh, 1.9. 1.9 from 0.1 is 
1.9 from point one or uh, point 0.9 to point 0.1 to what is that? 1.7? 1. 1. I say 1.7. 1. 1.7 plus point 0.1 is 1.8. So you're going to see a difference in each one. Each side will indicate. It should indicate the same on both sides, which should be an easy to cal calculate. It's two times one side. So this one being 1.8 difference, you'll come over to the um, E log. And this one is recording at 15 liters. So we're going to record 15 liters. Jim's E log will indicate. Uh, for the new one will indicate three separate areas here to record all three numbers but for this for the sake of this argument it's 15 liters per minute and it was three point it was uh, 1.8 so that's 3.6 so 3.6 which will show you that you have a low total flow which is what you expect but the mass flow controller is 1.27 so on the band we're going to indicate right here it says 15.19, which is 15.2. So we're going to change this up 0.2. 15.2 and hit calibrate. And now it's going to indicate here, it should indicate in a second, that it's 15 liters. And that's where we want to see it at. Then we hit next, and you'll see the uh, manometer bump to this is where it's now reading 18.3 18.4 is the 18.3 what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the e-log and record the 18 point it's recording 18.3 and 5.6 Mass flow controller is good, high total volume, the high total flow. The difference is 3.24 with a reading of 18.9. Um, so we're going to record 18.9. And it's a bit high, it's okay, that's what we're here for. So 18.9. Hit calibrate. Now, we're, 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 um, we're, we just calibrated the 18.4 uh, uh, span, and then over here on the manometer, as I press the next button, it's going to drop down to 16.7, which is where we will be doing the, uh, the flow audits. Um, here, we're now recording at 16.7 on the screen. So I'm going to record 16.7. Manometer is reading 2.4, which means uh, that it's actually reading with the 0.1 difference, 2.3, which means that over here I'm going to record the 4.6. Total flow is okay, which is what we want to see. The mass flow controller is here is okay. We have a 2.6 difference with a total uh, total calculated flow of 17.15, which we'll, we'll put in here as 17.2. So And as you as you see and with this, these are very different numbers. It's because I used fictional numbers for the temperature, fictional numbers for the um, pressure. So that's why the numbers have changed so much. Um, obviously, these if you're using the accurate numbers, then we would be fine. Um, so now we recorded our corrected flows and. Now um, we hit exit, and you 
obviously the water manometer gets back to its equilibrium at point you one. Do. Wherever you use the water manometer, whatever base number you, you, it's easier to start it off at zero. We just, it was very difficult to get exactly to zero. Um, you can drain it out and you can, you could probably chase that zero all you want to get to zero. Um, but as long as you get a good number to start with, um, you can calculate from there. And what we fill up the water manometer with is uh, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. Um, general tap water works. Um, I know that some of the water manometers do say that there's uh, Dwyer fluids, um, but what we're using here for the sake of this procedure and what we'll probably uh, be using for all of it is just general water. You um, use oil, then you have to get the specific gravity in there. So. Right. Um, you have to use a specific gravity of the oil, but water is what we use for these. Or DI water might or, be. Yeah, deionized water. Um, better than tap water. And you don't change it very often. Right, and, and if we, you would have to bring the DI water with us, because I don't know that I would want to keep DI water in the site. Um, the entire year because um, the temperature of the in, internal temperature of the building is roughly 85 degrees um, and that's not really good for DI water. So once you've calibrated the flow you're going to come back out here to test and move down to relative humidity RH and hit select. Um, here you do not want to hit calibrate you want to hit reset. Um, Calibrate is a long process that will take uh, more time than we need um, and the factory reset will set it back to 35% which is where we want it to be. So we're going to come in here and just hit reset and it'll reset it to basically 35% and then you just hit exit and from there once you've gotten to this point, you do a final leak check, um, make sure that everything's good, do the, the self-test, and from there, you've calibrated the band. And then you run the self-test, it's going to run all the different procedures. Um, once you're done with that, you hit the exit button, always hit the exit button. Um, otherwise, you will not do, you will not sample until you hit the exit button. And then you can download your data from the previous uh, visits. And that's it. As you see here, it's going through um, doing the, the reference withdrawal and all that. And now it's going to start doing the flow making sure that you've taken the leak audit device off. Um, that's happened to me before. And you see here it's doing the flow. Once the self-test has begun, you cannot exit it, um, which is a good thing. It takes about a minute the whole thing from beginning to end. You're back to your home screen and from there you're done.